Good evening, I'm David Kramer with Alaska Weather. As always, please visit our website at weather.gov slash Alaska. You can get any updates to our forecast or check out any watches, warnings, or advisories that we have out for your area. You can also call our weather info line at 1-800-472-0391. Get any updates to the forecast who that means as well. And we have our email address here at the bottom of the screen, nws.ar.tvweather at noaa.gov. Give us any comments or concerns too, that means as well. Starting off, we'll take a quick look out by Delta Junction area. Pretty clear skies out there, but we are starting to see some of this cloud cover develop. And especially as you look to these mountains to the north, we're having a lot of activity develop over the mountains. And we are expecting to see a lot of convection for many places in the interior, including Delta Junction, as we move further into this afternoon and evening hours. As we look at our fire danger slide, we can see that up in the upper Yukon Valley, we do have area of high danger for fires. And then also in places of the southern central part of the interior out towards that Delta Junction area, we do have high fire danger. And then a smaller area here, it's hard to see in the greater Anchorage area, high fire danger there as well. Taking a look now at our satellite imagery, we'll start off here in the Bering Sea with our main low pressure system out by the Pribilof Islands, bringing rain to the islands there and also to some of the areas down by the Aleutian Islands and for the Alaska Peninsula. We also have another load developing around the Alaska Peninsula area that has its front extending out near Kodiak Island, bringing rain to those locations into Bristol Bay as well. As we look further to the east, starting off in the Panhandle area, we have some cloud cover over uh, those locations that are bringing in some isolated showers. And then finally, as we look further to the north, some cloud cover over much of the eastern part of the Brooks Range, starting to dip down towards the Northway area as well. Starting off with our forecast for the remainder of the day, we'll talk about quickly by the Tanana River area where we do have some of uh, the advisory out for flooding has now expired, but we are expecting some areas of ponding to continue on the road, but diminish for the uh, Tetlin Road. Now starting off out over in the far western portions of the area, we can see our low pressure system out by the Pribilof Islands, bringing rain to those locations. Some rain further off to the west, but not quite making it down to the western and central Aleutian Islands, as we do have high pressure building in from the west. We do have our low out over the Alaska Peninsula, bringing in some rain to areas around Bristol Bay area, up by the YK Delta, Kodiak Island as well. And out ahead of that front, we are seeing some of that rain push into areas along the North Gulf Coast, including Prince William Sound and eastern parts of the Kenai Peninsula. Other areas of the mountainous terrain around, such as the Talkeetna Mountains and Alaska Range, are seeing some isolated rain showers. And we are seeing isolated rain showers continue up through southwestern portions of the interior out by the Seward Peninsula as well. And as we look out by the Western Brooks Range down through central interior, down by the Eagle area, we are expecting that chance for isolated thunderstorms to continue through these evening hours. Up by the Fort Yukon area, a little bit further to the north and parts of the eastern Brooks Range, we are expecting primarily isolated rain showers. And then along the Arctic coastline, and not expecting any new precipitation at the time, although there will be some cloud cover continuing up there. Down by the Yakutat area, down through the Panhandle area, expecting those light rain showers to continue through the evening and into tonight as well. And as we continue to get that southerly flow out ahead of this frontal system, we are expecting to see continued rain showers for much of the Panhandle, stretching along the North Gulf Coast to include areas around Prince William Sound and Kenai Peninsula as well. And as this front continues to push further to the north, expecting more widespread rain for some of the southern locations, especially areas right along the coastline. Areas of rain showers in the mountains, Talkeetna Mountains, Alaska Range, continuing, especially in the evening hours, dropping off a little bit as we approach the morning. And we are going to see continued isolated rain showers through much of the eastern interior out towards some portions of the western interior by the Galena area and up for the central and eastern parts of the Brooks Range. Up along the Arctic coastline, continue to see uh, no new precipitation. However, we will see areas of fog out as we get closer towards the Kaktovik area. Down the west coast of the state, not a lot of precipitation until we get down by the Kuskokwim Delta area. And then down in the Bristol Bay area as well, we'll see some widespread rain from low pressure in those locations. And then as we drop down into the Aleutians Eastern and Central Aleutian Islands, we'll see some more rain. But as high pressure builds in from the west, we are expecting some fog underneath that developing overnight for the Western Aleutian Islands. As we look into Thursday, bridging continuing to build in over those Western Aleutian Islands, uh, but we will still see some rain showers by the central Aleutian Islands and as well as the eastern Aleutians. And as we push in towards the Bristol Bay area, continuing to see that low pressure move slowly to the east, but still gonna see some rain showers throughout the greater Bristol Bay area, down by Kodiak Island as well. 
up the west coast of the state, going to see rain showers up all the way through the Seward Peninsula and out to the western portions of the Brooks Range. However, over the Arctic coastline, we are going to see a diminishment of the rain showers staying primarily in the Brooks Range. But then as we drop down into the interior in the afternoon hours, expecting to see more isolated thunderstorms anywhere from down by the McGrath area up north of uh, Glenna, or Galena area through much of the central interior as well and out by Eagle. Can, going to see those continued chances for isolated thunderstorms Thursday afternoon. So you move down into the south central state, not a lot in terms of the thunderstorm activity, but we will see continued rain showers, especially in the mountainous terrain. Tuckeetna Mountains out by Wrangell St. Elias. And then along the Gulf Coast of Alaska, we are going to see continued rain from the front, continuing to bring that southerly flow out over the Kenai Peninsula and along the coastline. Continued rain showers for the Yakutat area down through the Panhandle area, all the way down by the Yakutat area. As we move into Friday with that southwesterly flow continuing for all the Panhandle area, we are going to continue to see rain for that coastline continued out also for the North Gulf Coast for much of South Central Alaska. As we get to the more interior locations, a lot of that activity is going to be more in the elevated terrain in the mountains. And then as we move up into the interior part of the state, and we are going to see some areas in the western part of the interior where we will have another chance of isolated thunderstorms. Again, that's going to be in the afternoon now on Friday. As you move up into places of the eastern interior up towards the upper Yukon Valley area, we are going to see that continued chance of isolated thunderstorms in the afternoon there as well. Brooks Range is going to see showers out through all of the Brooks Range, but not a lot of activity on the Arctic coastline once again on Friday. Down the west coast of the state, isolated rain showers throughout all the west coast down into the Bristol Bay area. And we will see some continued rain for the Alaska Peninsula and eastern Aleutian Islands, as well as the Pribilof Islands. But with high pressure building in from the west, the western Aleutian Islands and central Aleutian Islands should be clear of the precipitation, holding that off further to the east. Taking a look now at our low temps for Thursday morning, dropping down into the lower 40s for the Aleutian Islands, mid to upper 40s as we move into the Alaska Peninsula and Bristol Bay area mid to upper 40s for the YK Delta area as well, right around 50 degrees for the Nome area as we get into the Seward Peninsula and further to the north. However, we have Kotzebue there only dropping down to 55, warmest low temp for Thursday morning for the state. Up along the Arctic coastline dropping down into the mid 30s, but should stay above freezing. And as we move down into the interior, eastern portions of the interior dropping down a little bit more with Eagle dropping down to 46 as well as Northway. Down in south central Alaska, primarily dropping into the mid to upper 40s, but Anchorage staying a little bit warmer there at 50 degrees. Homer as well, only getting down to 51 degrees. And for the Panhandle area, dropping right around 50 degrees, with most locations dropping just below 50. For afternoon highs on Thursday, we are getting back up into the 60s for most locations for the Panhandle area. However, Sitka staying a little bit colder, only getting up to 57 degrees for Thursday afternoon. Yakutat getting up to 59 degrees in the afternoon and then for south central Alaska along the coastline staying a little bit cooler there mid to upper 50s but as we get into the more interior locations getting up into the 60s with Talkeetna getting the warmest at 67 degrees. In the interior you're going to see temperatures approaching 70 degrees with Fairbanks actually the warmest in the state Thursday afternoon 73 degrees expected high and then as we move up into the Brooks Range only getting up into the 60s there Arctic Village only getting up to 60 degrees through the pass at 62 along the Arctic coastline, getting up into the 40s for the most part. Kaktovik only getting up to 39 degrees expected for a high. Let's drop down into the Kotzebue Sound area. Further off towards the west, we are going to see a little bit cooler temperatures there, only getting up to around 50 degrees, but Kotzebue itself getting up to 63 degrees. Uh, down as we get further to uh, the south, it's going to be in the 60s for most locations, but as we get out by Gamble area, only getting up to around 42, much cooler off further to the west away from mainland Alaska. YK Delta area in the 60s for the most part. McCoryx staying a little bit colder there at 55 degrees. And then in the mid 50s for the Bristol Bay area. And getting into the upper 40s to around 50 degrees for much of the Aleutian Islands and Alaska Peninsula. Cooler as we get off towards the west. Then the Pribilof's going to get up to 47 degrees afternoon high. For our lows for Friday morning, dropping down into the lower 40s throughout the Pribilof Islands and Aleutian Islands. As you drop into the Bristol Bay area, mid 40s expected there. Mid 50s as we get closer towards the YK Delta and up by the Seward Peninsula. Up along the Arctic coastline, dropping down into the mid 30s, but again should stay above freezing. Down in the interior part of the state, 
only dropping down to the lower 50s for the most part. Galena going to be the warmest low temp for Friday morning at 55 degrees. And then down in the 40s to lower 50s for South Central Alaska, staying a little bit warmer there at Anchorage, 53 degrees. And then right around 50 degrees, dropping down into the upper 40s for the Panhandle. Right around 60 degrees for highs Friday afternoon for the Panhandle. 50s to lower 60s for South Central Alaska and into the 70s for the interior part of the state with the Arctic coastline only getting up into the mid 40s. We will be back shortly with the aviation section. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. For our aviation segment, we'll start off with our flying weather. For Thursday morning, out over the Bering Sea and Aleutian Islands, we have widespread IFR conditions there. Starting to get a little bit more MVFR as we get to the Alaska Peninsula and some areas around Bristol Bay. As we look up further to the north along the Arctic coastline, we are expecting to see some areas of IFR there as well. Then out over the Gulf, including Kodiak Island area, expecting to see some MVFR and IFR conditions. Up into Prince William Sound area and some other areas around South Central Alaska, including the southern part of Cook Inland, expecting to see some MVFR conditions and should be VFR for the Panhandle area. And as we look into Thursday afternoon, going to continue to be VFR out for the Panhandle and more MVFR conditions instead of as much of the IFR conditions for much of the Gulf of Alaska, Prince William Sound area, down into Bristol Bay as well. Up along the Arctic coastline, however, we are going to continue to see IFR conditions Thursday afternoon. And then much of the Bering Sea and Aleutians continuing to see IFR and MVFR conditions. So look into Friday morning, we will see IFR and MVFR conditions continuing out over the Bering and Aleutian Islands, extending out towards the Bristol Bay area and some areas near uh, the Kuskokwim Delta coastline. As we look up along the Arctic coast, we will see IFR and MVFR conditions continuing through Friday morning and then down into the upper Yukon Valley, going to see some IFR or MVFR conditions up there. Down in the Gulf of Alaska area, including places in South Central Alaska, expecting to see some MVFR with some IFR conditions along the North Gulf Coast. And then down in the Panhandle area, expecting to see some of those MVFR conditions extend in with a few areas of isolated IFR conditions as well, especially as we get along the Gulf Coastline. And Friday afternoon, those IFR conditions clearing up for the Panhandle, but seeing MVFR conditions throughout the afternoon. And that's going to extend up much of the North Gulf Coast until around the Cordova area and then some areas in the eastern part of the Copper River Basin. However, interior Alaska should be VFR. And as we get along the Arctic coastline, expecting to see IFR conditions Friday afternoon. Into the Bering Sea, most areas still going to see the MVFR and IFR conditions with the exception of some of the locations further out to the west starting to clear up a little there. And then some locations in the eastern Aleutians and some of the Alaska Peninsula area, especially on the Pacific side of the peninsula. Kodiak Island also starting to get more VFR conditions with some areas of MVFR further to the south. As we move down into the passes, we'll start up north at Anaktuvik Pass. Should be VFR conditions with the exception of some afternoon thunderstorms possible. And of course, those could drop down conditions to IFR pretty quickly. For Adigan Pass, same as Anaktuvik, should be VFR throughout much of the day with the potential for isolated thunderstorms in the afternoon. For Lake Clark and Merrill, should be both in VFR throughout the day. Rainy Pass should start off in VFR and improve to VFR. Windy should be VFR for Thursday, as well as Isabel Pass and Mintasta Pass. So moved on to Tanita should be VFR there as well, and marginal conditions expected for Portage. VFR conditions all day for Chilkoot and White. Taking a look at our freezing levels this morning, a little bit of warmer air up to the north at freezing levels about 8,000 feet, down around 6,000 feet for much of South Central Alaska and for the Panhandle locations. We will have 6,000 feet freezing levels for Kodiak Island, extending out for much of the eastern part of the Bering Sea and much of the Aleutian Islands as well. A little bit higher freezing levels further off to the west. For icing on Thursday, starting off in the Aleutian Islands between five and 8,000 feet, getting a little bit higher as we get closer towards Bristol Bay and then above 10,000 feet for South Central Alaska. Out by the Tin City area between 7 and 11,000 feet there and up by Fort Yukon area above 7,000 feet. Down in the Panhandle between 6,000 and 10,000 feet expected. Taking a look at our jet stream, we have one area of the jet coming along our eastern border out of a southerly direction, about 75 knots there. Main core of the jet to our south, getting as high as 130 knots south of the Alaska Peninsula. And through the central part of the Bering Sea, northerly flow around 65 knots. Dropping down to 9,000 feet northerly flow, 10 to 25 knots, getting higher as we get by the central Aleutian Islands, 35 knots there. Weaker flow out over the state around 15 knots until you get along the west coast, southerly flow 25 knots there and easterly flow up to a size 20 knots out over the panhandle. 
southeast, southwesterly flow as we get by the Panhandle on the 3,000 feet, around 15 knots there. Southerly flow in the Gulf going 15 to 20 knots for South Central Alaska. Lighter flow around 15 knots until we get up by the Arctic coastline, 25 knots out of an easterly direction there. And easterly flow over the southwest part of the state, 30 knots there, dropping down as we get out over the northern parts of the Bering. And then way out west, we do have northwesterly flow getting as high as 30 knots out by the central Aleutians. Fort Turbulence tomorrow below 4,000 feet for the central Aleutian Islands, extending out uh, towards the eastern Aleutian Islands as well. And then the area around the Barrens extending out towards Lake Iliamna, expecting some turbulence below 4,000 feet there. We will be back shortly with the marine forecast. They're called hooligan, candlefish, cigarfish. Um, they're a really, really oily fish. They're a little on the mushy side, so we like to fry them. And we decided to uh, go upriver about maybe half a mile upriver and fish off the bank there. For me, one of the nice things about the fish is actually that there's a lot of uh, other populations other than like the local Athabascans and Alaskan Native people that go down there and take advantage of it. There's a lot of Pacific Island people, a lot of Korean people, a lot of other Asian folks out there. They all love, this, all love these little fish and they all go out there every year and catch them, bring them home. I think people really just enjoy getting their own food. Um, obviously we don't have to, we could just go to the store, but it's kind of like the principle, you know, you go out there and you're going out there with your family and your friends and you're, you know, getting food. I take my family out, that, like that's the way I grew up. Um, I grew up in Nome. Um, we spent um, a lot of our winter and definitely all of our summer subsistence hunting and fishing. And it, for me, I don't know, I just feel like it was a great way to grow up and it's really foreign to me when people don't, don't have those experiences. And so I really, really wanted my kids to, you know, have that experience and to know where their food comes from. You know, I don't want them just to think that all their fish comes from the grocery store or comes packaged in little packages of meat. Like I want them to know that it comes from other beings that live on this earth and, you know, to have, for them to have some respect for that. There's a lot of other distractions, like my, my oldest son really, really likes Angry Birds a lot, way too much. I want him to learn to enjoy being outside and learning to enjoy harvesting your own food. When, when I was growing up, actually, my mom, uh, she, she gets amazed by this, but she literally, we'd wake up in the morning, eat breakfast, and go out and play, and she would have no clue where we were or what we were doing until lunchtime, then we'd come back hungry, eat, and then go back outside and play again until it was night. I don't know, maybe she, if the world's changed or just because she's gotten older or whatever, but now with my kids, like she can't even let them out of her sight. I started working in canneries. I started working on the docks for a little bit, ended up on a tender, went over to Bristol Bay, so I spent some time um, commercial fishing. Then um, I actually traveled around the United States as a pitch salesman for a little bit. Like uh, the, the dude who sells the ShamWow, kind of like those the commercials that you see on TV where everything's $29.95, $19.95, $9.95. I would do that live at starting at the Alaska State Fair. I stopped being a pitch salesman. I went to my brother's Marine Corps graduation, my younger brother. And when I was watching that, I decided that was something that I would like to do. And then went back home to Alaska and then joined the Marine Corps from Alaska. Well, we were scouts. Our job was to be on the ground. And so our job was anything that had to do on the ground. We were um, forward recon. We'd clear houses and stuff like that. Every time that we stopped, we'd do a sweep for IEDs, improvised explosive devices. I'm sure everybody knows what those are by now. Um, even when I was growing up, you know, our, you know, my mom said that after I got done with high school, I was gonna go to college and I wasn't going to college for me. You know, she said that, you know, you need to go to college so you can learn and then you can come back and then you can, you know, serve your people, basically. I, I guess that's just was part of the way that we were raised. I mean, even when we were out fishing, I wasn't just fishing for myself. I was actually fishing for um, friends and family as well. You know, and there's not, it's not a burden or anything. I'm happy to do it, you know, and the Marine Corps wasn't a burden either. <laughs> kind of a pain at times, but. <laughs> I really feel like maybe part of the reason why I, I try to do the subsistence stuff so much is because 
the education that I want to get now is my, my Yupik education, you know. Um, even though I did grow up subsistence and stuff like that, we moved away right around the time that I would have been going out and starting to do things like seal hunting and, you know, going on the big hunting trips and stuff like that. So I never actually got to do that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm starting to learn it all now, and I'd like to go home and I'd like to learn the Yupik language. Um, I know some, I don't know enough, and I'd like to learn more, you know, about how we do things. My Yupik name is Nava. How we name is that when you're born, whoever has died around the time that you're born, you would, you get their name. You know, so I got my name, um, was from my great grandma, uh, Mamie Seaton. Her name was Nava. I don't know what it means. I asked one of my uncles about it, and he just told me that the name was one of those, it, it was an old name, so they didn't actually know what it meant, meant anymore. And so I think about that, about how far back that name goes. You know, if it's thousands of years, if it's 5,000 years, 6,000 years, how far back that name goes. And so it's just, uh, it's, a really tangible connection with my, my my past and history and it helps ground me in, to know wh where I come from and that I literally am standing here because of all the people that came before me on this entire planet. I think that we've become really really arrogant and really disconnected from not only just like the earth and I also hate how cheesy that sounds now like people have made it cheesy to where I sound like some sort of hippie when I say the connection to the earth but hey that's that's legit. I mean, we are part of the earth. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Starting off the marine forecast, we will take a quick look at the ice edge. As you can see far out to the east, we do have some areas that are slowly melting and that gradual melting is going to continue along the coast as well. As we get off further to the west out over the Chukchi Sea area, we do have some weak southerly flow now, but that flow is going to start to become light and variable. And then we will just have ice movement that will just work with the currents and will continually or continue to gradually melt there as well. Moving down for the main part of our marine, starting off in the southeast part of the state, we do have a somewhat southerly flow in the inside waters, uh, weakest in the central part of the inside waters, picking up to around 20 knots as we get further to the south. Out over the eastern parts of the Gulf of Alaska, easterly flow 15 to 20 knots there, seas as high as 8 feet, strongest to the south. As we move into Friday, we will have primarily westerly flow out in areas of the eastern part of the Gulf around 15 knots there. As we get closer towards Yakutat Bay itself, it will start to see some more easterly component to that wind. In the inside waters, primarily southerly flow still 10 knots for the most part until we get up further to the north around 20 knots north of Juneau. For Thursday in south central Alaska, primarily easterly flow around 20 knots for the northern Gulf coastline, picking up to 25 as we get south of Seward. In Prince William Sound area, northeasterly flow around 15 knots there. For the Barren Islands area, south to eventually easterly flow around 20 knots, and then in the Cook Inlet area, northerly flow around 20 knots there. Then on Friday, all flow dropping down pretty significantly down to around 10 knots, and that's going to be true out towards Prince William Sound area, north Gulf Coast, until we get far east of Cordova, going to see winds out of the west about 15 knots there. On Thursday for the Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island area, we do have southwesterly flow 15 knots on the Pacific side to begin the Shelikov Strait area, northwesterly flow 10 knots there. On the Bering side of the Alaska Peninsula, weaker flow only around 10 knots out of a northwesterly direction. Seas highest on the Pacific side up to as high as 7 feet. Then on Friday, you can actually see somewhat of the rotation around low pressure system out over the Alaska Peninsula see those rotating southwesterly on the Pacific side becoming northeasterly as we get closer towards the Bristol Bay area only around 10 to 15 knots for all locations. Seas highest again on the Pacific side around 6 feet. Westerly flow throughout the Aleutian Islands uh, weakest as we get further to the west around 15 knots there picking up to as high as 25 knots as we get to the central and eastern part of the Aleutian Islands. Seas up to as high as 9 feet. Then on Friday, flow dropping down 10 to 15 knots, still primarily out of that westerly direction. Seas only as high as 6 feet on the Pacific side now, and then again diminishing as we get further off to the west, only around 10 knots by the Shimia area. 
for Thursday along the west coast of the state, primarily a northerly flow around uh, the Nunavik Island area out by St. Matthew Island and the Pribilof Islands, 10 to 15 knots there, becoming more easterly as we get further to the north, 5 to 10 knots there. Then on Friday, flow becoming more northwesterly along the coast, 10 to 15 knots, but as we get out by the Pribilof Islands, becoming more easterly, around 10 knots there. Along the Arctic coastline, we do have easterly flow along the Arctic coast, 20 to 25 knots strongest to the east, and then diminishing along the west coast to around 5 to 10 knots out of a northerly direction on Thursday. Then on Friday, still going to see that easterly flow around 20 knots along the Arctic coastline, and then becoming more westerly as we drop down the west coast of the state, but only around 10 knots. Quick recap for the mainland part of the state for tonight. We do have rain from low pressure out over the eastern part of the Bering Sea that's going to stretch out into the central Aleutians, eastern Aleutians uh, into the Bristol Bay area and Kuskokwim Delta area from that low pressure. We are going to have frontal system pushing through the Gulf that is starting to slow down, however, but still enough to bring some rain to Prince William Sound area, Kodiak Island, southern portions of south central Alaska, and some lingering showers in many of the mountains, Talkeetna Mountains, Alaska Range. And then as we drop down into the southeastern part of the state, going to see some showers all throughout the Panhandle area up towards Yakutat as well. In the western parts of the interior, out by the Galena area, going to see some rain showers there, up by the Brooks Range as well. And then out by the Eagle area, going to continue to see rain showers, especially in the evening hours. Along the Arctic coastline, going to be pretty clear precipitation, but there will be some fog developing by Kaktovik. Then for Thursday, expecting to see a chance of isolated thunderstorms from much of the interior from down by McGrath up north of Galena, out through the central interior, out by Eagle as well, especially in the afternoon hours. Brooks Range is going to see some isolated showers as well. Going to see rain for the south central area, especially in the mountainous terrain and along the north Gulf Coast. Panhandle going to see rain as well. All along the west coast of the state expecting to see some rain showers down through Bristol Bay and for the eastern and central interior islands as well, but high pressure further off to the west. For Alaska Weather, I'm David Kramer. Thanks for being with us. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. <laughs>